James Beard award-winning chef with a fine wine expert and pour that all into the middle of the eclectic arts district of downtown Los Angeles, well, you simply get one of the most popular craft cocktail bars in the city. So let's go mix up some cocktails at the Everson Royce Bar. I'm Joe, and I'm one of the owners of Everson Rice Bar. My two partners, Randy and April, married couple, have twin boys who are about seven years old, named Everson and Rice. We named our wine store in Pasadena after them. It was a little confusing because Everson Rice is kind of a weird name, but we figured Everson Rice Bar, even if you don't know what the first two words mean, you know what the last word means. ERB is uh, a bar in the downtown Los Angeles Arts District. We do wine and we do beer and we do a lot of spirits and craft cocktails. We've got a huge patio up back and hospitality is what we're all about. Our mantra is help the people. And you'll hear it repeated throughout service. That's our, that's our war cry and we let everyone know that you take care of everyone. It doesn't matter what the food is or what the drink is, as long as everyone's being taken care of, it's all that matters to us. As far as the arts district, there's always something going on. We have you know, a small emerging farmer's market, there's tons of galleries, museums, shops are opening up. We're kind of an adult space because we are a bar, but I mean, it's not our space. It's the space of the people who come here. Hi, my name is Damian Diaz on behalf of Everest and Royce Bar, and today I'll be doing my elected official cocktail. It's a tequila cocktail, stirred. It's typically, people like to do juice, spice, shaken margarita, paloma variations. I myself like to bring out the characteristics of the tequila itself, and I like doing that while stirring. So today I have the ocho reposado, reposado meaning rested in French oak barrels. This is one of the best, very delicate, very elegant. Uh, we're gonna be doing two full ounces of the beautiful reposado that I have here. We follow that up with sailors. It's a French aperitif that utilizes gentian root. It's gonna have a nice touch of black pepper without actually using any form of spice. I'm gonna be doing three quarter ounce of that. Now I'm a big fan of adding booze that's sweet, not extra sugar for the sake of using sugar, just extra booze. So I'm gonna be doing some wild elderflower liqueur, which is also French influence. I'll be doing a half ounce of that. Just to kind of bind it all together, I have orange bitters here. That's gonna add a touch of bitterness to complement the sweetness. I'll do two dashes of that. Get some ice in there. I'm gonna stir this quick stir so the outside of the mixing glass gets nice and frosty, which we're almost there. You don't wanna dilute too much, obviously. And for this cocktail, it was actually inspired by my mother. She loves tequila, uh, reposal being one of her favorites. So I want to do something very delicate, but also very sophisticated form of a cocktail in honor of my mother, because she's very sophisticated as well. We have a Nicanora glass. I'm going to pour this nice and even on the side of the glass to avoid the texture bubbles. To finish this off, my mother's favorite fruit is grapefruit. And uh, this gives it a nice little splash of color for aesthetics. And give it a quick little one over, over the rim, on top, and I have an elected official. So it's all about the narrative when it comes to cocktails or anything we do. We always want to have a story. We don't just do things to do them, and we translate that to the cocktails. That's why we always have them being fun, and we change it up all the time. It could be from day to day, week to week. We don't really do seasonal cocktails so much because we always want to have something new and a story to tell our guests. One of our most popular menu cocktail choices is going to be bartender's choice. It seems nowadays they want that interaction with the bartender. So we just ask a couple of questions, you know, what's your, what's the spirit you're thinking about going with? And do you want it boozy and straightforward or you want it bright and refreshing? And we just try to work that into your experience and what you want to do. Damien, I'm excited. So am I. <laughs> I'm excited because I see all this here and I know we're going to make something great. Well, you are going to make something. I'm going to watch. Tiki cocktail, tiki it's inspired, a tiki, tiki, pineapple, citrus, like bright, funk, Jamaican rum. We got some uh, gin in there. So I'll tell you about what we're about to do. A little backstory. Of course. Right? So growing up in the Bay Area, uh -huh. we would drink these things called Cuddy Bangs. Cuddy Bangs. Cuddy Bangs are these package deals in a brown paper bag with a styrofoam cup, uh -huh. an eight ounce can of dull pineapple juice, 
-hmm. You know those little bottles of liquor? Yeah. Okay, so they would give you three. A Bacardi Limon. Okay, the mini bar version. The right? mini bar version. The shot. Yes, indeed. So Bacardi Limon, Tangeray Gin, mm -hmm. and Seagram's Gin. You put it all in the styrofoam cup, and you just go to town with it and see where it takes you. So, so we're I, gonna go to town on that. Yes, night, indeed. A, a more sophisticated version. So let's start off here. Uh, let's do citrus first, because if you mess up that way, you just toss out the juice, not the booze. You know what I mean? Don't mess up. You should know. How many years have you been doing this? Been I've been doing 19. it for a little while, but we should, we should I still don't want to take any Down in your sleep, girl. We're filming this time. Oh, it's a little different. So we're gonna do a half ounce of lime it's juice. Just you and me. Easy peasy. And we're next. We're gonna do pineapple. Love pineapple. Keep it funky. Drinks. That is always tiki to me. Freshly juiced. That and coconut. All day. I love me some pineapple. And we're gonna thicken it up with a uh, agave syrup. All right. Agave nectar. Sweet stuff. Yes, like indeed. It. All organic, 100%. Sweet and sour. We're gonna be doing three quarter ounce of this. And there we have it. All we'll right. move on to the gin. So this is St. George Spirits, really good friends of ours. This is the Botanivore, 19 botanicals. It's gonna push through all the citrus. We're doing an ounce. Full ounce of that. All right. And to kick it up a notch, we have the Rum Society 62 All Pot Still Rum. This is gonna have funk, uh, Jamaican, Barbados, Guyana, Caribbean flavors. Full ounce of this good stuff. And I'm a big fan of funk. Uh -huh. In my tiki cocktails, it just has layers and depth. Moving on, we're yep. gonna whip this baby. So what we do, we got crushed pebble ice. So this basically gives you more control on how much you dilute. Which will dilute a little quicker though too, yes. right? Yes, I'm just gonna whip this baby up. So we're whip gonna it up. whip it until you don't hear anything. Whip your hair back and forth. Whip it back and forth, As like does that song go? Now you hear the difference? I do. The ice sounds like it's not it's just very all liquid yet. now, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beauty. Do you like what you see? It's frothy. Yes, it is. It's so pretty. We, we pour that baby in there. The pineapple, the agave. I can smell it from here. It smells really yummy. Mm -hmm. And then we just top this baby off with some crushed ice until it becomes like a snow cone, basically. Yeah. A little straw. Thank you, Vanna White. And this is what we call a cutty bang. What's this stuff? Do we need this? <gasps> yes. So this is our Hellfire Habanero Shrub, but you just want to put it right up top. Very concentrated as a kick. To the 19-year-old uh, Damien. I had fun back in the day. Cheers. Oh, this is good. We have a Type 47 license, so you can bring your, your seven-year-old, your stroller in. It's not uncommon to see families on the patio enjoying Chef Matt's French fries. People definitely come for the food. I mean, we have a James Beard award-winning chef making bar food. Chef Matt Molina, two and a half years ago, he started looking for new challenges. We needed a chef. We started talking, and we all came together to open Everson Rice Bar. This, obviously, it's a bar, and we do bar food. And so this was a really nice opportunity for Matt to stretch his legs and try to make things that he's never made before. So the first thing that was on the menu was a hamburger, and it's probably, it's probably what we're most famous for. Um, the second thing we're probably most famous for is um, the biscuits. The biscuits are great on their own, but they go really, really well with bourbon. It's true. Okay, so it's my turn now. What are we making? Yes, it is. We're going to do a Bermuda Sour. Bermuda Sour. Bermuda Sour. So we're Classic. going to have uh, Cruzan Blackstrap Rum, uh, rum made from the byproduct and molasses and burnt sugar, so it's not to go to waste. It smells interesting. Thick, bold Looks flavors, burnt. nuttier. So we're going to do two ounces of the rum. Two here. ounces. Oh, my god. Full two. We're going to do an ounce of lemon, mellow citrus okay. to the brim. Steady hands, steady flow. I'm not first from everybody, guys. No, it's not. I'll be your Vanna White. And simple syrup, three quarter ounces of that. So oh. right at the, Oh, so it's gonna be a little sweet then. A little bit, but then we're gonna do egg white, which, Ooh. yep, right there's good. It's an egg white, I don't like Egg that. white, all organic. Just the egg white, though. So now we're gonna dry shake this. So you're gonna close it off really, really tight. No ice needed. You wanna just build up the froth like the previous drink, but this time it's with egg white. Yep. See, this is no fun with no ice in it. That's with it. No, I love no, the okay. egg white drink. Let it do its thing, girl. No, I know, but it's just like, hey, everyone, I'm a cool bartender with no noise. Hey, don't forget to smile. Shake it. Shake it harder, harder, harder. Go. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're done. Perfecto. So we're going to do some ice in there now. Shake like your life depends on it. Here you go. My life depends on girl, it. Girl, get it. 
Is it like a rap song or something? Uh, Vibe to it? Alright, stop. Turn the rate and listen. Yeah. I sat with a brand new invention. Something. Just a pulling me tightly. Okay, really good. My hand is frozen on yeah. tin. Pour that baby in there. Okay. Nice and easy. Check you out. Don't waste a drop. You got it, girl. Almost... Oh, perfect measurement. Yes. Right? Perfecto. Now we finish it off with an orange. Okay. And then you're going to fold it and just put it straight ahead. There you go. Right along the okay. edge. That's beautiful. Freaking beautiful. You got it. Good job. I'm dying to taste this now. Bermuda sour. Cheers. Yummy. Yeah. That's the layers. an interesting taste. Chestnut, walnut. I was going to say it's nutty, but it's kind of chocolatey. I want to make some more. Let's do it. Freestyle. Yeah. Take your poison. You got plenty to choose from. When someone comes here for the first time, we want them to leave feeling like we embraced them, like we were as hospitable as we could be. And that's really what we're all about. I mean, we, we make food and it's, it's really good food and, and we, we serve drinks and the drinks are amazing. But that's not what keeps people coming back. You know, people come back because how they interact with the space and the hospitality and, and how we make them feel hopefully when they're here. As far as drink pairing, we always fall back on, on our roots. Uh, so like wine is our main owners. So one thing that people can always get here is a great glass of wine. Very affordable to pair with anything a chef makes. We have an alcoholic slushy machine that we just put in a couple weeks ago. So now you can come and get a frozen bourbon cocktail or, or a daiquiri. I mean, I think the most popular drink over the course of the past year and a half has been the Yola Tango, just our ginger paloma mezcal rift. Definitely something that we sell a lot of. Hi, everybody. We're here today to make our most popular cocktail to date, the Yola Tango. The cool story behind this is everything in Spanish has a double entendre. Yola Tango means like, I got it. You're literally telling someone that you have it. Or in our case, like, don't mess with me. We got this. So first ingredient, we're gonna start off with tequila Ocho Plata. Really cool story behind this tequila is that they're the first tequila distillers to add not only a vintage, but a single estate where the agave comes from. Two ounces of that Plata. Followed by a half ounce of Aperol. Aperol is a traditional bitter. It's gonna give us that nice balance towards the fresh squeezed lime juice that we do in house every day. Half ounce of that as well. And last but not least, really important, the ginger. Fresh ginger root that we cold press in house and add cane sugar. And that's gonna pack the punch and the spice for this drink. Dash of hardango. Hard shape. Then we'll strain over a penny pound Colin Spear. Top with Topo Chico. And garnish with a candy ginger and grapefruit pill. There it is, yellow tango. Well, I had fun here today at the Everson Roy Spa in downtown Los Angeles. Are you nosy for more craft cocktails? Well, then stay tuned. So at most hotels all around the globe, in the room they have these little miniature refrigerators with your mini bottles of booze and your even smaller packets of pretzels and peanuts. Well, today we're at a Best Western Hotel in Hollywood, California, where they've scrapped the idea completely of one of these little miniature fridges to give you your very own miniature cocktail lounge. So let's go mix up some cocktails at the mini bar. My name is Brandon Boudet. I am a chef and owner of Mini Bar, Little Dom's Restaurant, and the 101 Coffee Shop. Mini Bar Hollywood is the comfiest, coziest little bar nestled inside of Best Western in the base of the Hollywood Hills. The idea of Mini Bar came about because there are no mini bars in the rooms here at the hotel, and also it's a very small, sort of compact, quaint place. When we were creating Mini Bar, we basically took the idea of the best hotel bar 
and the best neighborhood bar and put it together. Though we are in a Best Western, we are populated by regulars every night. There's nights where everybody in the bar knows each other. It's really become a home for the neighborhood. We wanted to just like make it really comfortable and inviting to where you could come in and, and feel like you're at home. So I am now at the bar with Jeremy and Brandon, and we are going to be speaking a little bit of whiskey, bourbon, rye, right? Yep. Okay, so tell me, what, what is the main difference between whiskey, bourbon, and rye? Bourbon, rye, and scotch are generally made from three different grains. Bourbon, mostly corn. By law, 51% corn. Mm -hmm. You can have other stuff in there. You can put wheat and rye, but mostly corn generally makes it the sweetest. Rye, this guy here. Let me guess, made from rye? Exactly. Um, mostly rye. They can be all the way up to 100%. In Canada, they can be all the way down to 1%, but in the U.S., 51% rye. Mm -hmm. um, we have this little guy is, uh, from Tennessee, which says right on there, corn, rye, and malted barley. It's pretty much the fam most famous sounding whiskey to me, the Tennessee, Tennessee? whiskey. When yeah. somebody says like, whiskey, the first thing Jack that jumps to Coke. mind. Jack and Coke. Jack there you go. and Coke. Sounds can like you a make bourbon outside the U.S.? You cannot legally make bourbon outside of the US. Really? But you can make it in New York, you can make it in Kentucky, you Why can make it in California. Yeah, anywhere in the US has to be in a charred new oak barrel, mm -hmm. which gives it that smoke. Legally, wasn't it in Ireland that legally it can only be called a whiskey if it's distilled for three years or something? I read that somewhere once. Three years in Ireland, three years yeah. in Scotland. And in Scotland. I think we should mix up some cocktails next. What do you think? Agreed. Let's do it. The Harvey Wallbanger was all Jeremy's idea. We always knew opening that we wanted to do a Harvey Wallbanger, but we knew we could make it better. We went through so many different versions of it. We deconstructed it. We're like, we can do it with San Pellegrino soda. We can do it with orange crush, grape crush. Tried it with gin, tried it with vodka, found out what it tasted the best. Made it taste it, made it taste it, made it taste it. Finally found the one that's right. What are we making? What am I making? Because I'm going to be making something now, right? Today, you're going to be making the Harvey Wallbanger. Harvey Wallbanger. First of all, who's Harvey Wallbanger? Because I've heard a couple of stories and legend. Nobody really knows, right? Supposedly, it started out in a Black Watch bar in, I think it was 1956 in Los Angeles, where a guy invented a drink with vodka, orange juice, and Galliano float for a guy named Tom Harvey. It was a surfer who would come down to Sunset Boulevard, get so drunk, he would start banging into the walls. I heard the surfer story too, but I heard that he lost a surfing competition, then he went to his local watering hole, and then he drank something, and then banged his head up against the wall, but his name was actually Harvey. But this is not your dad's Harvey Wallbanger. We're gonna change it up a little bit. So we're gonna do one ounce of this gin. It's a City of London Dry. One ounce? Instead of just a float, we're gonna do a full ounce of the Galliano. Could they have made the bottle any more? Awkward. Okay, right, I'm gonna do it right to the brim here. <laughs> All right. Smell that? Mm -hmm. Vanilla and black licorice. That I was gonna say licorice for sure. So. What's next? Two ounces of this orange juice right here. OJ, freshly and squeezed. Mm-hmm. There you go. Flip it up. I'm trying not to spill it, you know? There you go. I'm just handing you everything. There you go. Now, ice scoop. Pull it to the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boom. You're good. Put this on. Give it a soft tap. Give it a hard whack. And now. It wasn't really hard, was it? Was it? All right. Shake it until the tin is frosty. Yeah, shake it until my hands glued to the tin. It needs a lot of dilution to hit through. Okay. That ought about do it. All right. I'm going to wipe this off. Is this more like a daytime drink? It is. It's a summer drink. Right? It, it is. is a beach drink. Beach drink. How much of the story at least works out. There you go. There you go. How's that? Hawthorne strainer. Strain it in. Mr. For me. Hawthorne strainer. <laughs> Love him. It looks good. Okay. Oop. Is that all? That's all. Now the last bit is gonna be your aromatics. Lemon bitters. Ooh. It's a citrus on top of the flavor. Two big dashes on top. Two big dashes. Mm -hmm. We're going to have your straw. Okay, and give it a little stir. A little stir. That brought down. A little bit of decoration. What makes it pretty. There you go. Beautiful. The new Harvey Wallbanger. Cheers. What's a rare one? Do we have a rare one? Brandon, grab me that. What's this? 
So this uh, is not rye, bourbon, or scotch, but it is actually corn green whiskey. Green whiskey. So it's called green whiskey, because as whiskey. opposed to grain or malt, this one's from Spain. Mm -hmm. They only made it once. Okay. And they made 300 bottles of it. And so now you see there's- You have um, bottle 19. Yeah, we have half half left of bottle 19. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. just about. Yeah, let's take a swig of this stuff. Let's see what this can do. And let's see where they stopped. The idea with this one, they own a sherry company, uh -huh. so they have access to really good barrels. They decided that they better sense. make their own whiskey and put it in their own sherry barrels. What do you think, Brandon? It's just like the most unique. What does that mean? It, it, this is a puzzler. The smell and the taste are totally different. You could, you could. I think I just burnt my nose hairs off. This is some strong. <laughs> this is strong. This is some strong <laughs> stuff here. We're over a hundred wow. proof. What um, is it? It's fifty-three point five. Yeah, one hundred and seven proof. But this is one that you could definitely going like, in. Sip for an hour and figure it out. You know. You would have to yeah. sip this for an hour. <laughs> it is smoky. It's flowery. It's aftershavy. It's strong. I like it on my palate. It's like very smooth. Once it settles, it's incredibly it settles. smooth. Yeah. Like, First is butterscotch, and then it gets then it gets serious after that. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's butterscotch, and then it actually turns into booze. I think this was fun. I think we should continue doing this whilst the camera is off, because I don't think I've tasted this one. One more, cheers. One more. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. I definitely help in the creation of the drinks, because I am I like to drink. Preferably, I like tequila on a regular basis. But when it comes to the menu, Jeremy's pretty much in charge of that. We definitely updated some kind of grody 70s drinks and took out the grodiness, added fresh fruit, added better ingredients and balanced them out. Another kind of grody 70s cocktail that we felt matched the room, matched the hotel with all the photos down the wall, with the old Hollywood feel. We wanted to do a Godfather, which was supposedly Marlon Brando's favorite drink. With all the tiny improvements and the tweaks that we made on the Godfather, it is now our most popular drink. Hi, my name is Tiana Fields and I am a bartender here at Mini Bar. I am here to show you one of our most popular cocktails, the Godfather 101. You want to start with a lush little rocks glass. I like to fill it with ice and get it cold. And then drop our only garnish, sweet little cherry. So it starts simply enough. Just do a dash of Angostura bitters. It adds a little bit of depth and a little bit of bitterness and is like a small, easy way to kind of tie a cocktail like this with a lot of spirits together. And so we start with amaretto. There's just a half ounce of that. You could say it's almost like a scotch old fashioned. So I think that the amaretto and then our next ingredient, the rum, kind of around the corners a little bit. So they make it less aggressive without getting rid of that oozy taste. We follow it up with two full ounces of scotch. Just so you remember that you're drinking it. I think everybody kind of has their own technique with stirring. Sometimes it just makes it look like we know more about what we're doing. But I really like to pay attention to how it starts to chill the glass, see the viscosity of the liquor and tell that it gets a little thicker. And I think that really helps define when it's ready to go. And make sure you get it nice. And over all that ice, dilute it just a bit more. Godfather 101. The Tokyo style waffle was created because we're always just trying to come up with ideas of like, how can we give people little bites of food to keep them here for that second drink? We all come from that 1970s, early 80s age of the waffle that you popped into the toaster. I was really big into the savory sweet kind of thing going on, and we came up with some Japanese flavors to go along with it, and so it became this Tokyo style waffle. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet, a little bit savory, a little bit crunchy. It's amazing the reaction you get from food professionals when they taste it. They're like, I don't know, you guys nailed it. I don't know what it is, but you guys nailed it. I'm excited to make a drink with you now. 
Yes. What are we making? Um, we're going to be making the pink flamingo. Pink flamingo. Yes. Aptly named because it is tall and pink. All right. What do I need? Um, you're going to need lemon juice. Lemon juice. Three quarter ounces. This guy. Yes, ma'am. All right. This is obviously freshly squeezed in house. Yes. We're going to do um, a full ounce of grapefruit juice. So it's going to be a little sour, a little uh, bitter. Absolutely. And we'll do just a half ounce of simple syrup. And a little bit sweet. Yes, that'll okay. make it just sweet enough so it's not such an assault on your senses. Well, you have to balance it out, right? Absolutely. I like sweet and sour. Is that enough? Yes, ma'am, that is perfect. Okay. So we're gonna do two full ounces of our La Gratona tequila. Ooh, I like this bottle. Is this like special? The Reposado itself is from Jalisco. And the cool thing about La Gratona is every step of the process is done under one roof. So from start to finish, it's all done in the same place. Um, they actually source their little glass bottles from like an hour away. Is there a trick to opening it? Ooh, magic, of course. There we go. Ah, all right. So two ounces of this good stuff. Yes, ma'am. It's really beautiful. It doesn't have like the sting or the sweetness of any like additives or anything wild like that. Mm -hmm. So it really lets you taste the fresh citrus and juice. I love these cubes. They stack perfectly. If I know, I'm trying not to spill anything. So you must shake it with all your might, my dear. Right side, good measure. Yeah. Tins are getting crazy. Oh. Yes, once the tin is super cold on your fingers, it's usually a good indication. It is. And I'm tired. OK. Oh, it's not as pink as I thought it was going to be. That's the magic. It's not actually pink at all. I said that was perfectly measured. That was perfectly, perfectly measured. Perfectly measured. So proud. Um, so we're going to take the Campari. It's our last component. Here's gonna... the pink stuff. There we go. Uh -huh. And we're going to measure out a quarter ounce. I'm going to slide a little straw in. Just dump it right over the top. There's the pink. There we go. There we go. Zest you a lemon, my dear. I'm excited to taste it, that's for sure. Mm. The pink flamingo. Cheers. In this day and age of like cocktail bars and the bartenders being the stars, it's really nice to actually have a place where all the neighborhood knows they're gonna know everybody behind the bar. The feeling that I want people to take away from this place is that they wanna come back. I get from like friends and, and people that have come here for the first time, they're always like, wow, it's so nice in there and so comfortable. And we're like, thanks, that's what we were trying to do. Well, I had fun here in Hollywood, and let me tell you, who needs a little mini refrigerator in their room when you have an actual mini bar? Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Until next time, I'm Tammy Harrison. Cheerio. What's, what's uh, this one in front of me right now? That's uh, Four Roses, a single barrel bourbon. This smells yummy. Four Roses is famous for um, keeping really good track of their yeasts. Um, keeping these, good track of like their yeasts. Like a yeast. baker, may I say, they want it. If you find something that works, great. Like, how long would a, would a baker hold on to a mother yeast? Forever. Generations. Generations. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Same with Four Roses, Wild Turkey. When they find a yeast that works, they'll do everything to protect it. Is it a secret recipe? Uh, them, no. They they will tell you their mash bills, how much corn, how much of the other stuff, rye and wheat. They'll tell you which of their, uh, I want to say they have nine different yeasts. Uh huh. They'll tell you all that stuff if you look, but no one else can make it because they don't have that yeast. What's the most expensive bottle you have? There's stuff that's not on the menu that's somewhat priceless that we'll share with regulars. Huh. So if you were to go on the internet and try and buy this bottle, it would be hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you were maybe to spend hundreds Friends of dollars at Minibar over a year, you. you could probably get it for free. Cut.